Cause some of y'all know, man, when you get to that last nug, you just like, I wasn't gonna cop again, but you know, <laughs> I'm like, yo, you, yo, you around? Y'all, so this is gonna be a three part video. I really wanna break down this. I guess I don't even, it's, it's weird because I don't know if I can call it an addiction because there were times where I was able to just break away from it. But I guess, I guess you'd say it was starting to become one because when I would get close to that last nug, some of y'all know, man, when you get to that last nug, you just like, I wasn't gonna cop again, but you know, <laughs> I'm like yo, you, yo, you around? Yeah, it was, it was pretty wild. When I started to notice that, that's when I was like, all right, all right, I need to, I need to do something. But anyway, so I wanted to break it down into, <laughs> break it down. I wanted to dissect this into three different videos because I know if I try to compile it all in one, it'll be a three-hour-long video. Ain't nobody got time for all that. So. Anyways, so I'm gonna start off with why I started smoking and it'll be a mixture of why and how I started smoking. It really began, I'd say around 2012. It was probably my last year of high school when I really actually got high. Um, it kind of reminds me of King Solomon because you know I was the kid who was like, I'll never smoke, I'll never drink, I'll never do any of that, delete all of that. It's just crazy because before you know it, it's like you find yourself doing the very things that you always promised when you were a JIT that you would never do. Uh, I was in the D.A.R.E. programs, I don't know if any of you guys still know what that is, but uh, if you're a 90s baby, holla at your bizzle, you know what I mean? But uh, I feel like the world used to be so pure, it's just so crazy how far it's come and I know that uh, older people can say that when it comes to technological advances, but for me it's just like, as far as like technological advances, morality, even reality, it's like, wait. <laughs> That person has a beard, you know what I mean? Like that is not a female. Anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. It's wild, but I began dabbling because like King Solomon, God always said to not mess with a strange woman. He was very astute, he was very wise, he was deemed as one of the wisest men to ever live, but that wisdom got taken away over time when he started to do the things opposite of what God called him to do. So. He started messing with the strange woman and God said specifically, be careful of the strange women because they will then start to turn your heart towards me and you'll start to worship other gods. We don't realize how granular that context can go when he says other gods, right? That can be a substance that's your God, right? Everyone has a God, everyone believes in something. Everyone's being loyal and committed to something, right? Whether you realize it or not. I won't go too much down that route because again, that's gonna start going into what it was like while I was smoking and the things that I had started to notice that helped me break away from it. Anyways, nonetheless, it was definitely influence from dating relationships. Uh, I had a girlfriend and it's crazy because when I was, I started dating as a jit, I was in what? third grade I think when I had my first girlfriend and it was like on and off between her and like they were the two hottest girls in the school so I was dancing between both of them and then in the aftercare that I went to another girl that I started liking there so that was introduced in my life early on and I'll talk about that in a whole nother video with like lust and women and how I got bit by that book very early in life which of course the enemy wants to get you while you're innocent he wants to get you while you're in your purest state where you don't expect evil you don't you don't you don't foresee people doing certain things that they do to you and um you know again i don't have that story of the m word m as in mole <laughs> esther i don't have that but i know that there's many people actually on this on this earth that have that story to share and uh if you're someone who's listening that's gone through that i absolutely will pray for you i already pray for you even though you don't know me i don't know you i don't need to know your name i just know that that is unfortunately quite common in society it's just it's crazy man but yeah these are all spirits man you know it's not i i know how difficult it can be to not hate that person but it's a spirit that they've given themselves to or that has taken over them and uh, again, Satan was just using them as a worker of iniquity to begin sin in your life so that you can then turn it into iniquity. Sin is missing the mark. Iniquity is purposefully missing the mark. It's when you know wrong and you still continue to do that. Anyways, that's, this is why I'm breaking the videos down because I just tangent and I know they still add value, but I just, I want to keep it condensed as possible. Anyways, it's like I already had started to dabble 
in it a little bit around my junior year, which was like 2011. I did it, but I never actually got high until I met that girl. It was my last year of high school. And the reason why I brought up the girls that I was dating before is because by seventh grade, I was already just through. I was like, man, y'all don't want anything serious. You know what I mean? I'm looking for a wife out here <laughs> and I was a jit, but I don't know. I always took relationships very seriously. And I guess they just didn't because they knew their age. I always felt like I was the wrong age. I always felt I was younger uh in the body than i actually was in the mind and in the spirit and doesn't mean i was always the most mature but i was more mature than most i would say especially when it came to the relational dynamics so by seventh grade i was like you guys just want a boyfriend to say you have one and then when you're tired of that and the responsibility that comes with it you don't want anything to do with it so i'm done dating until like something serious comes along and uh, all throughout high school i was single and then met a girl uh, who actually was a girl who ended up really changing my life later on. We only dated for about two, what was it? Was it two years or was it 10 months? It felt like two years. But yeah, so we just we were just really unequally yoked. And I don't even mean that in a spiritual context. In other areas, we just kind of weren't seeing eye to eye. But she was an amazing girl. I was trying to help her from smoking weed. And this is, this is interesting because this is, goes back to that scripture where it's like, you know, if you can help this other person who's stumbling, but be careful that you don't stumble as well. Don't fall into it with them. She was breaking it down, rolling up multiple times per day. And I was able to kind of drop that a little bit, but eventually she sped it back up. And that was one of the flags that I had noticed. And I was like, I can't do this. Funnily enough, I actually, for the first time, got lit with her and it wasn't anything that latched on to me then because i mean i went on years years to come after that and i would you know still dabble with it with the homies it was mainly a social thing we even had turned up thursdays with me and the homies back in the day and uh yeah it was it was just a cool thing to do when i was with people but then I actually started to experience certain hurts and pains in my life and you know I realized that I was going to music and a lot of the music I was listening to were people who were using the tree as like anesthesia to kind of numb and, and to at least they just framed it as feel better and just take their mind off of things right and I think we all experienced a little bit of that wave in media where your favorite rapper was maybe collabing with this other rapper who was talking about smoking it's like no matter what it was gonna be in your face somehow some way and uh, especially now, I mean, every every person and even their moms and their dads now are, are smoking and, you know, the medicinal use and all that stuff, you know, I'm not taking anything away from that, but you gotta be careful, right? I, I was looking at Genesis 3 verse 1. It said that the serpent was more subtle than any beast that God had created, right? And it's like interesting, like that's that's actually very interesting because it starts off subtle where it's just a thing for fun, right? Until you then have life experiences and things start to snowball you realize that you're not going to this thing that just started off as for fun or for social now because you're hurt and you want to kind of lick your wounds in a corner if you're if you're introverted like me when i'm hurt i don't want to be around people and now i have this relationship with this tree and i'm falling in love with the art of rolling i'm falling in love with the art of sparking it up i'm taking my time with it listening to music and then you start doing what actually this book atomic habits talks about that book talks about habit stacking and how a lot of times in order to build a new habit that you maybe don't enjoy that much is to stack it with other habits that you do enjoy well the inverse of that is true as well too if you have a habit that you do really enjoy and you start to mix that in with things that you also enjoy right but then also maybe even things that you don't enjoy you know what i gotta clean the house I'd rather get high and clean the house, you know? It's just, it literally starts to just cascade into a lifestyle and now you're high all the time. And what does God say? God says, be vigilant, right? Be of sober mind, neither give place to the devil, right? Ephesians four, I'm actually gonna break that down right now. It says that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. So again, just deception here and there where it's like, ah, it's, it's, not, it's not a big deal if I clean the house lit, you know? Uh, it's not a big deal if I, I'm leaving the house and I just wanna, you know, hit a little bit. I don't need to get super blasted, but just like a micro hit, a micro dose is what I was calling it. And before I knew it, I wasn't that guy who would completely absolve my responsibilities. Uh, I can't say that all the time. If I had a day off and it was like clean the house or like, 
get blasted i'm definitely gonna get blasted after i've done everything that i need to do but certain things just fell off the priority list because it was like i'd rather do this instead it was just wild how like i found myself inviting it into bits and pieces into my life and then i got a job that i really couldn't stand and i was driving all the way to pompano and it was medicare related and i was like these old people drive me crazy and i i'm the type that i can't get lit and work at the same time so it's like all right well maybe i'll bring it with me and then on the way home i'm getting blasted so that I can just feel good after spending eight hours feeling bad. It's just, it was just crazy, man, how it just built on top of itself naturally. It wasn't until a couple months ago where I was like, okay, not only are all these things happening, there's other things that started to cascade and I'll talk about that in the next video, but really the biggest things that got me started was influence from people, relationships, but then also music. Music was a big one. Mac Miller, I love Mac Miller, but he get, he definitely like fast forwarded that. And I remember watching a day in the life of, uh, Wiz, Wiz Khalifa and that got me more into it as well too. Thank God I'm not big on the alcohol but like watching Wiz drink Bombay Sapphire like it was water every day I was just like bro and him and Juicy J it was insane. I was like thank God I don't love alcohol like that and the feeling that it gives me. Now, I don't mind drinking but now more than ever I understand why God says be a sober mind and why he says kings should not drink strong drinks right because it starts to throw off your judgment at the first sip you already start to feel a little bit heavier and things are a little bit slower especially the longer you've gone without it and it's just a, it's a recipe for disaster because now all it takes is like i said from the beginning how people who've had those m related experiences in life early on it's a spirit that takes over that person to where they don't know what they're doing necessarily. Again, I'm not taking everybody off the hook, right? Because some know for sure damn well what they're doing and there's something coming for them. Trust me, vengeance is, is the Lord's, not ours. But it just, it leaves more room for you to be vulnerable for a Trojan horse to enter your life, right? For a sneak attack, for someone who maybe you can't even, because you're not of sober mind, you can't even discern their motives, their intentions and how they have their own, I like to say from the movie King, they have their own kingdoms in their eyes. They have their own idea of what they want to do in their life and how they're going to use you to get it accomplished, whether it hurts you, whether it, you know, leaves you on the streets, whatever the case may be. So yeah, but then also pain. Pain is another entry point to where now that you've gotten this thing that's giving you a feel good emotion, your brain just sees it as dopamine. When people exclaim, like, I don't understand people who are addicted to drugs and how they could, it's like, bro, there's something in your life, whether it be food, whether it be you're addicted to being in a relationship, I've definitely seen that, you know? Whether it be addicted to being social and always having people around you 24 seven, there's some kind of thing that gives you dopamine that you go to right away. You either, you can't be alone, you can't be without food, you know, you you can't not be in a relationship and just be by yourself. You can't be in silence. You always need some kind of noise in the background, whether it be music or something playing. That's your go-to because your brain just sees what's gonna give me serotonin and dopamine because I don't feel good right now and I wanna reach homeostasis. If the room's not hot, too hot or too cold, you're good where you're at and you'll stay still, right? Uh, but once it gets uncomfortable, then you wanna move back to what homeostasis. You wanna, ah, it's a little hot in here, let me cool it down. Oh, it's a little too cold in here, let me warm it up. Anyways, I'll leave it at that, but stay tuned for part two and three. Love you guys.